<laughs> Good, yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I have approximately 20 questions to ask you. Firstly, so glad to talk with the NASA company founder and CEO, the creator of the amazing documentary series, The Time That Made Us, The Movie That Made Us, and recently, A Toy Store Near You. I am a huge fan of your series because I am a movie fan and a toy collector, toy collector since my childhood. Uh, Kenner, Hot Toys, NECA, Hasbro Marvel Legend, Master of the Universe. If we go back to the past to begin, what can you tell us about your journey and how you are today to be the CNO of Comedy Dynamics and the Nacelle Company? Um, and, and also, I just want to make sure you're aware, I, I, they only booked me for half an hour. So I, I want to make sure I get okay. to all the important questions. Perfect. Uh, Thank you. Uh, merci beaucoup, if I'm understanding the accent correctly. Um, yeah, I just like you, I've been a toy collector my whole life. And I was very lucky. I was doing a lot of stand-up comedy specials for Netflix. And one thing led to another and they knew that I was a toy collector. So they allowed me to make a show about toys and I guess it did okay. And they've let me make more. That's how it works. The season two of the toys still new are coming this under 25. This is a perfect program for a great Christmas. And would like to know which were your main inspiration to create this new and amazing series. So I, uh, when the COVID crisis began, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who owns a toy store in Burbank. And I said to him, I go, what happens if there's a quarantine? And he said, well, our income will go to zero, but our costs won't change. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, we should do a show to help raise money for the stores, but also give exposure to the stores because that could help them during coronavirus. And that was the inspiration, was that conversation. Can we say that the series, The Toys That Made Us, the movies that made us and Toy Store Near You are based on the nostalgia power force? Yes, I mean, absolutely. Like, you know, everybody uses the word nostalgia now, like it's a popular word to use, but I just have a real appreciation for the craftsmanship that went into the toys in the eight, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And that's really, and the movies as well, with movies that made us. And we're just really trying to celebrate that story. Can you tell a little about the transition from comedy special to documentaries? Um, we, you know, we had to build a lot of infrastructure to do the stand-up comedy and that same infrastructure from the, the, the editing bays to the cameras, like it was the same. And I've always loved documentaries. So it was just this kind of thing where it was like, we already are doing all of these things for stand-up comedy well, why don't we just do them for documentaries? And there was no reason not to, so we just did it. I mean, it's really that simple. The toys that made us, a toy story near you, are the most show the importance of the lovely toys of your childhood, as Kenner Star Wars, Mattel Master of the Universe, as both Transformers. What was the toys that you always wanted to have and why? So when I was little, I, my parents were very supportive of my Star Wars toys, uh, but they were not supportive of anything else toy-wise. So I, my friend Tyson had all these G.I. Joe vehicles, and I always wanted a hovercraft, which I have now. I always wanted a hydrofoil, which I have now. So... Those were the toys I really always wanted that I didn't have. They were really um, usually G.I. Joe related when I was a child. In the season two of a Toy Store near you, we discover five new toy stores, Kokomo Toy, Far Point Toy, Brick and Break Records and Collectible, Batcalf Comics and Toys. How do you choose these stores? What's the perfect toy store for you and why? 
So when to uh, The Toys That Made Us season three came out, we had partnered uh, with about 50 toy stores uh, to celebrate season three. So when we decided to do a toy store near you, we sent an email out to that group. And of, that, of those 50 stores, I think about 30 signed up to do a toy store near you. Then we put out a press release that we were doing this to the whole world and we got 20 more stores to come on board from that press release. Uh, in the season two of Toy Store near you, we discover five new toys. Uh, what can you tell us about the episode on Super 7? I mean, Super 7 is like, I mean, I say it in the episode, but like the last time I went there, which was about a year ago, like I went in, I buy stuff from Super 7 all the time online on eBay or directly from their store. So when I went into the store, first of all, I was hoping to see Brian, but also um, I, you know, I was like, oh, I'm in San Francisco. I have an hour to kill. I'm just going to go in. I'm not going to buy anything because I always buy. I bought like 20 figures. Like I, I can't not buy his stuff because it's just, they make the best stuff. But also, unlike every other toy store we're covering, they're the only toy store, sort of, that makes their own product. So it was very cool to have the show be about the store, but also the process in which they make their own toys. I have read, to prepare this interview, um, and discover that you have seven identical Volcom black polo shirt and jeans that you wash once a week in order to not to think about the clothes that you want to watch. Can you tell us about uh, this excellent idea? <laughs> I don't know where this came from. It's so funny. Uh, that is not true. I never said that. Where did you hear that? Like, it, like I, all I said I, in one interview, I was like, I wear the same black shirt every day. I, not the same shirt. I, I have like 10 copies of that shirt, but I never said that about my pants. Like that is not true at all. Like I have lots of pants. They don't all look the same. Oh no, I'm not mad. It's just so funny to me. Like this is like, this is like the third interview this week where they're like, why do you wear the same? I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, so you, you heard it here. Uh, I, I do have more than one pair of jeans. Okay. Uh, I, I have a lot of pants that are not jeans. <laughs> so yeah, but the black, ironically, I'm not wearing it right now, but it is true. I have one type of black collared shirt uh, and I do wear those uh, every day during the week. Um, can you tell us how you shoot the season two and um, what was the program to shoot them? So, we actually did not shoot season any of the shows. Okay. Every episode was shot by the owners and the employees of the okay. stores. So we would send them a list of what we needed and they would film everything. Okay. Then they would send us the footage. We would edit it together and do the graphics and everything and the music and whatever. And then we distributed it but the stores shot all their own footage. Uh, as a toy collector, I am really interested to know how you have built 2,000 vintage toy collector collection. <laughs> that is true, I do have 2,000 toys. <laughs> um, your episode director is always very inspirated and successful. Where come your inspiration to shoot or to build these episodes? I'm, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand that one. Okay. How uh, your inspiration is very good for this episode. Where comes your inspiration to build each episode? Because it's perfect. The song, the, the, the short stage, yes? It's perfect. How it's come from? Thank, thank you for saying that. Um, our, our inspiration really is, we're trying to put people that watch the show in the store. So everything that we're doing is to try and raise money and give exposure to the stores. So by transporting the, the viewer to the store, you know, hopefully they'll of course enjoy the episode, but if we're lucky, after the episode, they'll go online and buy something from the store. Yeah. It's a great concept. Thank you. 
uh, which were your main difficulties on this season? You know, I'll be honest with you. We really, I, I, I know this sounds fake and a lie, but it's not. We really haven't had any problems. All the stores shot their footage perfectly. Um, we're always asking for more because as we're editing, we start to realize what we're missing. And we've asked, I mean, one store, we asked them to shoot like 14 times more things and they never complain. They're always happy to do it. And we're so grateful for that. Um, um, during my research, I have read that you would like to speak a lot with, if you can, with President Ulysses S. Grant. Why? <laughs> He's my favorite American president. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I love about him is, you know, the first part of his life was pretty much all failure. You know, when the Civil War started, uh, he was practically homeless and he was broke. And then three years later, he's the head of the whole army. Seven years later, he's president of the United States. And I always find that very inspirational because my job is 99% failure. So it's, it's sometimes when you have so much failure, it's easy to get sad. And, you know, looking up to people that were successful despite staggering failure, I, I always find that to be something that inspires me. Uh, myself being treated for life for, for diabetes, I would like to know how your Apple Watch helped you to manage your diabetes and got you into the best shape of his life, of your life. So what the watch does yeah. that's so brilliant is, and it's funny, nobody talks about this. Like Apple doesn't market this, but I got one as a gift. I, I didn't even want it. And what the watch does is it takes advantage of your natural competitive nature. So it, when you get the watch, it asks you a bunch of questions. How much do you weigh? What do you want to weigh? And you put that all in, how tall are you? And then every day you have a goal, but so you have to make the goal. And if you're competitive at all, you don't want to lose. But the other thing that it does, and this is really how you lose the weight, it gives you a monthly challenge. And they're hard, like they're really hard. So like my current challenge this month is I have to do 32, I have to burn 32,000 calories in December. But it literally says to you on December 1st, hey, Brian, in November, great job. You burnt 25,000 calories. Your goal this month is 32,000. I was like, what? <laughs> But I'm so competitive. Every day I'm like fighting, fighting, fighting to burn. I got to do like 3,500 calories a day to hit that number. So that's with the, that math is screwy. But yeah, trust me. That's, that's what I got to do. Uh, I would like to know what's it like to work with Zac Efron from Netflix, Dawn of to Earth with Zac Efron, The Rock, Disney, new program being this attraction, Leno DiCaprio on History Channel's Grant, and other great personality. Zac Efron is the nicest, I mean, he's just so wonderful. He's so thoughtful. Uh, he's so funny. What, one of the first times I ever met him, uh, I was telling him my daughter Uh, was a huge fan of High School Musical. And he was like, oh, that's great. Then we had like a three hour meeting. At the end of the meeting, as we're leaving, he turns to me and says, hey, do you want to take a picture with me to give to your daughter? Like, who does that? Dwayne Johnson, you're going to find this hard to believe. Dwayne is funnier. I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. Funnier in private than he is in public. Like he, he had me laugh, he, like I laughed so hard. And you know, it's funny, the first time I ever met him, I was interviewing him. And before the interview, while they're putting on the makeup, I said to him, I go, hey, I just want to tell you, 
I love the episode of Voyager that you did. And like, I even said to my friend when I saw that episode, this guy's the next Schwarzenegger. Like I knew it. So we do the interview. It's like an hour later, he gets up. He's like, thanks everybody. And then he like, just, he's like, Brian, let me tell you some more about that Voyager episode. You may not know some things. And here he is. He's the biggest movie star in the world. So busy. He's got a, his finger in a million pots. And then he just sat there talking to me for 20 minutes about a Star Trek thing he did 25 years ago. So just, he's just wonderful. We're very blessed we get to work with the best people. Can we hope to have a new season of Toys That Met Us, the movie that met us? Your episode on so Die Hard is wow, great. Thank <laughs> I you, have man. seen three times. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have some new episodes to come for this uh, two weeks series? So, uh, Toys That Made Us, all I can say about that is stay tuned. Okay. Uh, and then for Movies That Made Us, we just had two new ones come out last week, the holiday movies that made us. Uh, and we have 10 more episodes we're making for 2021. Yes, <laughs> great. Um, what can you tell us about your best memories of San Diego Comic Con? Do you have a favorite uh, both? If yes, which one? For me, it's a, it's a sideshow collectible. When I go to San Diego Comic Con, each, go, each time I go to this one, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, is the question, what's my favorite thing I got at Comic Con? Yeah, or, uh, best memories. Oh, my best memory from Comic Con, that's easy. Uh, I was in a green room once with a lot of very, very, very famous people. Uh, and one of those famous people was Samuel Jackson. And I was in a conversation and across the room, I see Samuel Jackson getting, heading towards leaving the room. And as he's leaving the room, he puts on a Mace Windu mask and walked out. And what I found out later when I was talking to his mom, his, his, uh, his, his, um, his mom, uh, his publicist, he's a big geek like us. And he likes to see Comic-Con, but he doesn't want people mobbing him for autographs. So he literally puts on a Mace Windu mask and just walks around and nobody even knows it's him. It's a bright idea. <laughs> uh, what can you tell us about the Beyond the Attraction for Disney Plus? Uh, all I can tell you is uh, we're making it with Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. It is a deep, deep dive into the rides or attractions at the park. And um, it, it, I hopefully, if we did our job right, everybody's going to have fun, but also learn a lot about some of their favorite attractions. Nice. And my last question, what are your current projects? Um, like I said, we're doing, uh, you know, the, mov the movies that made us for 2021. We got 10 more episodes. Yeah. We're finishing up behind the attraction. Okay. Uh, we're doing a big, big series about the 55th anniversary of Star Trek. Uh, I can't say with who or anything, but uh, we're doing that right now. Uh, we do a show for BET Plus called All the Way Black. Um, and we have, more se we have at least two more seasons of A Toy Store Near You uh, coming out in 2021. We're doing some other stuff, uh, but I can't talk about that yet. Thank you very much, Brianna. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.